I, I believe Rivis Kronbergs uh, will, will, will join us probably. If you see somebody coming up, coming in, in, in into the hall with a face, oh my gosh, I, 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 I'm late, then uh, you just wave and, and <laughs> call him up just in case I, I, I miss him. So uh, I have prepared some of the questions, uh, but nevertheless, we are absolutely free to be uh, on time as we wish. I, I personally plan it for some 40 minutes, if that's comfortable with you. Obviously, the first question or the, 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 the first sentence we will start on is just yeah, simply because people who will watch this, they, they haven't seen probably, or they may be seen some of the previous sessions and so, but nevertheless, we have to you know, uh, tell, tell who we are. Hello, come up. <laughs> Uh, we haven't started yet, you're not late, I know you finished your session, so it's absolutely fine. Yeah, 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 here. <laughs> and uh, just, just, just uh, briefly <laughs> name yourself and, and, and tell who, who you are and, and, and so on. So, uh, with that in mind, uh, let, me, let, me, let me start our, our first final discussion. And, uh, the subject is uh, how do European countries, and we are very different ones, implement GDPR? Where we are with the legislation? Where we are with adopting it? Where we are with our own successes and failures, bottlenecks, recommendations, etc.? How is it going? Now, uh, if, if, if I might, I, 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 would, I would like to start uh, with uh, since uh, you represent uh, the country we are in, uh, Latvia. So uh, can you briefly tell us uh, who you are and where is Latvia in terms of GDPR implementation? Uh, yes, hello. I'm Raivis Kronberg, Ministry of Justice, State Secretary. But if, is it possible I tell in Latvian? Uh, yes, probably. <laughs> uh, somebody will have some overheads translating nice little words over the video, but it's yeah. fine. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Uh, jā, nu, es jau atkārtošos, bet uh, tas ir ļoti svarīgi, un es um, labprāt izstāstītu vēl vienreiz. Tātad 2015 gadā prezidentūra, mēs ļoti lepojamies ar šo vienoto regulu un, un regulu pieņēmu. Šogad simtgade es turpināšu lepoties un visu saicināt lepoties. Reguli jāsāk piemērot, un šodien 25. datums es viņu uztveru kā pieturas zīmi, un... Uh, Pieturzīmi jauniem ceļa satiksmes noteikumiem, un tie ir jāievēro. Kur ties lietas nozara vai ties lietas sistēma ir izdarījusi vai valsts pārvalde? Mēs ļoti labi spējam jaunas noteikumus ievērot. Latvijai tāda ir milza un daudz. Tā ir noteikti darba drošība, valsts noslēpuma apstrāde, Un noteikti mēs arī šo regulējumu spēsim, varēsim un piemērosim. Un pirmais, kas jau visās valsts pārvaldēs institūcijās privātajos sektoros, ir šī elektroniskā piekļūva sistēma stāsta lieti. Tie sen jau bija jānostiprina ar drošības politikām, video novērošanas. Un nāk klāt šis cilvēks privātums, un kā es iepriekšējā sesijā teicu, jāatceras, ka arī valsts pārvaldē strādā cilvēks, viņam arī tiesības uz privātumu un arī jārūpējās par viņu datu aizsardzību, un šī mīja darbības ar privāto sektoru un komerca vidi vienkārši tagad ir jāsalāgo un jānoliek pašā prioritarzējumā sarakstu priekšā. Ok, so we, we, we are good at it, we moving forward and uh, looks, looks, looks fine and promising. So we are on the right track as, as, as long as I understand. Okay, now uh, to the Lithuania, Indres Kersite, can you, can you please uh, uh, introduce yourself and, uh, and, and tell us how does it looks in Lithuania? Uh, good afternoon, my name is Indres Kersite and I work at the Ministry of Justice of the Republic of Lithuania. Uh, I have worked with draft law on GDPR uh, from the very beginning and we made uh, the law, draft law available uh, for the public for the comments. Uh, in June last year and uh, since we received a lot of comments uh, on some certain issues we have selected uh, four questions we wanted to discuss with uh, interested parties and we held the public consultations event which was also live streamed so that everybody could watch it uh, and uh, know the position of uh, our ministry and also of uh, state data protection uh, inspectorate that is the supervisory authority 
and after these consultations we have uh, made some corrections to our draft law and we worked on and uh, at the moment our draft law is undergoing the procedures at the parliament unfortunately we don't have it yet in force mm -hmm. um, but we hope that the parliament will adopt this law uh, before this summer holiday so in this spring session okay so so basically Lithuania is also doing fine in terms of pushing it forward Yes. And generally, uh, basically, somewhere where the rest of us, uh, all of us, uh, actually is. So, uh, yeah, we asked uh, the Parliament forward. for the urgency procedure, having in mind uh, the terms uh, that we have to move on and have this law in place because it's necessary for supervisory authority, also for public and private sector. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Van Aert? Mm -hmm. Yes, my name is uh, Bernhard Banasch. I'm the Deputy uh, Data Protection Commissioner of the German state of Saxony. The state of play in Germany is quite different. On a federal level, we have achieved a general adaptation to the GDPR already in mid-2017. Uh, and uh, now the colleagues in the Federal Ministry of the Interior are working on a draft adopting the specific laws, um, about 140 or 41 specific laws, which have to be adopted to the GDPR, often only in a reductional manner, not mm -hmm. really, in a, um, in a, uh, not really uh, as with regard to content. Um, on the state level, um, we have very different uh, state of place. Yeah. Um, there are states such as Saxony, um, who, which, which uh, did manage to um, bring their legislation uh, in line with the GDPR in a timely manner. Mm -hmm. And there are also some states which did not achieve that goal, uh, but which will achieve it in, let's say, the next four to eight weeks. Um, we have a great, a, a big advantage in Germany. Some of the institutions which are new for our other member states, mm -hmm. such as the um, internal data protection officers, are history in Germany. We have it from the very beginning, from the 1970s. And uh, for example, the uh, duty to have an internal data protection officer uh, is uh, given in Germany since, I think, 1980 or so, uh, for companies who regularly employ more than 10 employees with automated um, data processing. Um, it's, but it's also, in, in some states, it's also new that um, every uh, public institution, every authority has to, uh, um, um, has to ha have uh, an internal data protection officer for example, in my state, in Saxony, it, wasn't, um, uh, it, wasn't, uh, it, it was no duty until now, but now it is a duty. But okay. again, and I would like to stress that many of, the, uh, many of the ideas and many of the institutional ideas um, coming with the GDPR are indeed in Germany not, not as new as they might be, for example, in Greece. Yeah. Okay, so, so the European Union, European Commission, in, in that sense, maybe use some best practices in yes. terms of... No, I, I hope so, yes. Okay, good one, good one. Yes. Uh, Moritz? Yes. The same question to me? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, main things, or the, the, the most important bits, um, uh, Bernhard already said, um, since Schleswig-Holstein is in the nearly same situation as um, Saxony. Um, still, maybe one important uh, point, I don't know how it's in, uh, in, in Saxony, but we have a revision clause in our local um, data protection regulation um, saying after one year we will revise or we will reevaluate um, the system, the legal system we establish now for implementing uh, the general data protection regulation. Maybe, um, and that's no secret, maybe it has also something to do that um, Jan Philipp Albrecht, 
the member of the parliament will become um, the minister for uh, digitalization in, in Schleswig-Holstein. So he will be um, my boss um, on the 1st of September this year. So um, we, what I said in my um, presentation just now is um, we start with this continuous process of revising uh, what we are doing in, this, um, in the questions of data protection um, and even in the law we have this revision process implemented. Okay, thank you. Uh, Margaret. Yes, what's the situation in Sweden? And I think it, it's similar to Germany. So we had this, uh, what we call PUL, PUL, in Sweden in action since 1998. And it's based on the data protection regulation uh, from EU from 1995. So we had it a long time and by the way, Sweden is sort of a trusted country. We, we believe that the government takes good care of our data. So we're not too much obsessed with <laughs> anything. Uh, so this has raised some questions about how it's dealt with. And basically, we have someone that's responsible for the managing, management of personal data already in, in the government's institutions. Mm -hmm. I'm not working in the government, so I, I don't talk about details because I'm not aware of them. However, we haven't seen anything in the news that there should be anything that should be out of bounds or, uh, well, not ready. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm more concerned about private companies. That's where I have some knowledge. Uh, because some, they've done their homework very well. Uh, I would say maybe overdone it really uh, because Swedes are like that. If there's a rule, we stick to the rule. <laughs> and some others say, why bother? Uh, let's see what comes up. Uh, Swedes like, if it's a rule, it's a rule, okay, let's obey. Uh, there are other companies in Sweden that uh, say, we'll see what comes up. We, we take the risk of not doing anything. Uh, if our uh, competitors are struck by non-compliance, we'll do something. But otherwise, we just keep it under the radar and okay. hope that nothing happens. Yeah. Usually, these companies don't have that much of private customers. They are more business to business. Mm -hmm. So I think they're doing the right thing. But they can also have data breaches, etc. Absolutely. Absolutely. And they just so that we'll take the risk and see what comes up. Okay, so Swedes don't, don't jump on the hot things in, in, in that sense. But where is Sweden with the, with, the, with, the, with the, how do you call that, ratification of the local version, implementing local stuff that this is how we comply fully in Sweden, this is, this is gonna be working this way. It will not apply to tax regulators, ah, da, 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 okay. the, the, the law itself. Uh, I think we are adapting the law straight off the shelf mm -hmm. as good EU citizens <laughs> again. <Okay. laughs> and we have uh, some 40, 50 laws and regulations that have something that is overlapping with the GDPR. And those laws and regulations are now being reviewed and adapted. So there's a straight line rather than overlapping between oh, okay. those different laws and I think that makes good sense because it's then we know that it's GDPR that takes care of everything that's about personal data and of course then there are other laws like uh, law about how we handle patient data exceptions uh, we call them exceptions and there are exceptions mm -hmm. and other things, and, and they're also known, so I think it, it will be coming a, a pretty fair and square piece of, of legislation. That's my, that's, a, that's the view I get when I talk to people at uh, mm -hmm. the authority, Data Inspektionen, our, our national authority, that they, they want it fair and square. Okay, that's yeah. fair enough. <laughs> okay. We're good. We're good EU citizens, you know. No, it's it's fine. I didn't say you were not. It's just uh, every nation has its own, you know, 
ethics standards, some run to embrace EU law as much as they can, and some are saying, wait, 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 let's, let's see what others mm -hmm. are doing, and then da, 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 da. There are different cultures, we're all different, and it's we, fine. We like to sense. be on top of things, I would say. Okay, okay. Good. Adil, uh, how is UK doing? Good afternoon, my name is Adil Akush. I'm an independent consultant. I've been involved in uh, GDPR for the last two years. I've helped uh, three multinationals. Um, so I have a fair um, idea. Uh, I think the best place to start for the UK is obviously the Brexit. No. Um, <laughs> no it's a, um, but th there's a lot of debate uh, and there's a lot of expectation um, that after Brexit, UK will remain as an adequate country. Uh, with that view, uh, currently the UK Data Protection Act is going through the Parliament and largely it is based on GDPR with some tweaks as far as I'm aware. So, so UK will adapt the law to its own like, 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 like standards, etc. Nevertheless, of the Brexit, not Brexit, etc. If UK Brexits, you will have the local law in place. But, yes, the, which, but the GDPR will nevertheless be very important for those companies who choose to continue to serve yeah. citizens of other European countries. Uh, so so the, the, the view is pretty much adopting GDPR into the local law so that it is uh, pretty much aligned with GDPR such that the UK could continue trading Good. in the data sense with Good. the other countries. Okay, and, 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 and probably there are some, some, some local companies who are not going to serve European customers who say, I, 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 I've, I've served a beer like this in my pub for hundreds of years and I will not change a zilch. Uh, um, so so the, uh, for in, in the private sector, that there, there are two different pictures. Mm -hmm. Large organizations with enough resources and money and time yeah. have invested all that into becoming GDPR ready. Again, there are a lot of uh, surveys and research done in terms of how ready they are. Uh, there seems to be a general consensus that phase one is completed today. There'll be phase two until the end of this year, and then phase three sometime next year for the low risk items. Whereas for the small to medium organizations, the picture is completely different. Uh, they are much less prepared, mm -hmm. uh, they've had much less guidance, uh, not just from the regulators but also the associ associations. Um, my wife um, is in the real estate uh, mm -hmm. industry for example and the association could have easily provided a lot of the templates and guidance to all the relevant small companies to help them get started, whereas they're getting very conflicting messages from friends and family and so-called experts at the moment. So it, it, it's a picture of two halves between the big organizations and the small organizations. So that's why a lot of people describe the overall uh, uh, picture as work in progress still in the UK. Okay. Thank you. Now, uh, I, I, I would like to continue with, with, with the... With the experiences from Germany because, uh, well, if I know correctly that Germany is the only federal state in, in, in European Union and, and Austria is, yeah, and it's the second country that, uh, yeah, okay, <laughs> good, uh, makes a good point. Uh, but, but let me understand one thing. Now, there is a federal law and there is, of course, the municipalities and the states that are, you know, doing their own exceptions, their own standard. Of that. What does it mean for me as case A, uh, a company that is having multiple offices all across the Germany that serve customers all across the Germany? How, how can I, you know, uh, be compiled to that uh, maybe a zoo of, of, of the variations of the law and the second thing there are of course government offices like 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 uh, Bundes something uh, like 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 police and, and da, 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 da. so how do they comply with the local regulations because obviously they also treat people locally and there are some exemptions that 
some of the law is, is different in Saxony and some of it is, is different in another state. That's a, that's a, do you hear me? Yeah. Okay, the, pick the second okay. one. Uh, I think that's a, a, a good question. And, uh, do we hear him? No. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and um, oh. no, yeah, the answer you. is quite simple. The answer is really simple. Uh, although we have um, 16 states and one federation and uh, 16 different state uh, data protection implementation acts and one implementation act on the federal level, the competencies are quite clear. Um, the competencies for the public for, for, for the private companies are regulated, or no, the rules for the private companies are regulated in the GDPR and the new federal data protection law. Uh, chapter 1 and 2 of the new federal data protection act uh, is um, implementing GDPR, for example, with regard to the limitation of certain rights of the data subject. And this is in the whole federation the same. It's, it does not matter whether you, have your, uh, whether you are situated in Munich or in Hamburg or in Berlin. If you have a private company, you will have to, uh, you will have to obey the GDPR and the new Federal Data Protection Implementation Act. So mm -hmm. that's the one point. On now the second question, of course, is why do we have 16 state no, it's implementation not it's just the way it is. <laughs> the answer is because the state impl the st 16 state implementation acts, uh, um, the scope of these implementation acts are only the public institutions of the certain state. So if you have, uh, let's say, a registration office in Munich, this has indeed another uh, legal background as a registration office in Hamburg, more or less, it's the same, but the, um, the, 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 the state um, legislation is a little bit different, and it is a state legislation. It's not a federal legislation, yeah? Okay, okay. That's the answer. So there is no need to worry. Um, if you have a private company, you will have the same rules uh, to be applied um, in Hamburg or in Munich. Okay. Would you, would you say, uh, Moritz, you, 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 you've come recently to that office. Now, now, would you say the new GDPR law that's coming out from, from you is, is stricter or, or, or even easier than the previous German ones are? Or, or it's actually basically more or less the same and uh, nobody in Germany is worried about that because there's just legislation, it's all in place, or it's not? Well, I have a, um, from, the, from my job I'm doing now, um, I have a quite narrow view, um, but one has to understand that the mechanisms um, from the formal and the legal point of view, um, or material point of view, um, are not that, as Bernard also already indicated, are not that different. I do not want to say that Germany is always top, you know, because the Swedes wants to be it. Um, <laughs> but but um, from the, the mechanisms um, enshrined in the GDPR are very similar to mechanisms we already have from the former local and uh, federal laws. But um, the pressure we just talked about pressure, but the pressure yeah. on public administration is in fact higher than beforehand. Bottom up or from, from the government? Um, both sides, I would say. Okay. You know, there is this political um, promise. We will implement good new data protection law, but it's also from the bottom because people, Cambridge Analytica is one of these, these um, we always talk about light towers in, in Schleswig-Holstein. It's one of these light towers in the negative sense, um, raising more public awareness about questions of how to deal with um, data. And in, in Germany, we have actually um, quite a suspicion towards the government and towards governmental organizations. Yes, for good reasons. Um, and, and so there is a kind of public awareness um, and so the pressure comes from both sides, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it, my 
person, a very personal point of view, that's something good because um, this um, triggers um, new ideas and, and um, we see it as a quality management process. Data protection to understand as a quality management process um, and to implement the, well, not so new rules um, since today. Okay, good one, good one. Uh, now, I, I would like to turn uh, an attention to the Baltic states. Now, we, the Baltic states, are sometimes viewed as, you know, as a single market, as uh, neighboring countries, as countries that understand each other, trade with each other, etc. So, when we adopt our own legislations in Latvia, Lithuania, unfortunately, there's nobody from Estonia to ask, do we look at each other? Do we interconsult? Do we, do we understand the implications in, 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 in some, some business or, or other environment things among our countries? Do we somehow correlate that, that the countries that want to trade with us are still able to look at us as a single market? Um, in this point from GDPR, didn't look at the moment, but we have one uh, process uh, where we uh, going together. It's um, find my expert, experts about um, mm -hmm. ju uh, judgment, expert expertises. And there we were working together with Lithuania, Estonia and Latvia. Mm -hmm. But good questions, maybe need starting together looking in GDPR point two. Yeah. The, the problem is always the time. Uh, we, we are all, you know, running to, to time is ratify it. Time is problem, time yeah. is money. Okay, good one. Yeah. Uh, I would say that uh, actually uh, Commission, European Commission has settled up a working uh, group uh, mm -hmm. from all the member states of the EU and we had a possibility to share our ideas and to know what other states are doing on certain points like uh, child's age, uh, some exemptions, and, and similar matters. So we were always, as Lithuania, keeping an eye on what our neighbors are doing, both, uh -huh. both uh, Baltic neighbors and Poland and uh, countries with similar background uh, regarding child's age, for instance. And I would say here that uh, actually we have GDPR. Uh, which settles most of the rules that have to be uh, A common framework. implemented yeah. and uh, that companies have to comply with. Mm -hmm. And there are actually not so many provisions in Lithuanian law, draft law, I would say, at the moment, uh, that could uh, make uh, this uh, uh, ju uh, common market uh, problematic. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Back to Sweden. Uh, Sweden has, I think, enormous business connections with, with Latvia, Estonia, Lithuania, Swedish banks, uh, many, many, many businesses, many, many business trips during the day, etc. Is, 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 is Sweden assessing uh, uh, the, the, maybe the implications of some local stuff that might have any implications on their customers outside Sweden, like, like typical bank consumers in, let's say, Latvia, Estonia, Lithuania, and, and, and other? Or, or they come under Latvian regulation, or, or it's not like that. Will I receive a, a uh, letter from my bank that has that according to the Swedish law, we are now da 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 da. Oh, that's fine, but, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is more uh, what I believe there is. I, I, I don't, I'm not so much involved in this. I know about Nordea, for example. Uh, they, been, they are doing a lot of works to be GDPR compliant. Mm -hmm. uh, being a Swedish Finnish bank, uh, with lots of business in, in the Nordics. I don't, f well, I, I think their view is basically that G GDPR is GDPR and it applies the same way in all the countries. Um, no special cases for, for any country. It, it's, mm -hmm. it's a European Union law and, and so it is. Uh, and then maybe there are local regulations that are dealt with uh, locally, that, that's how I would go forward with it. 
so I'm not aware of, I haven't heard anything, and I keep reading a lot no, about it. I'm just asking, you know. So <laughs> I, again, Somebody I, has to ask these questions. The, uh, <laughs> the Swedish point of view is GDPR is European law, and then we comply to European law, and that's it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, okay, good. Bernard? Let me take the opportunity um, to say that I think that the GDPR will have an enormous impact not only within the European Union, but also outside the European Union, yeah. and I think worldwide. Um, it will be, I think, the same as with the Directive 95, uh, which has had an impact even to South America and to Japan and so on. And the GDPR is the next step, the next step in the in, in, in forming a worldwide um, uh, system of processing personal data. I'm absolutely convinced. Um, let us wait 10 years and you will see that this was right. Okay, good one. Uh, good in one. addition to that, uh, of course, there are local laws that says that personal data or, or well, not, I would put it that way, uh, like bookkeeping data or uh, well, business data of some kind that contains personal data need to be kept for so and so long time. And of course that law is then more powerful than GDPR. So that could affect the decision on a local level. Mm -hmm. uh, but on a general point, GDPR is GDPR, and it's actually, I would say, it's, it's a global data protection regulation, much more than general. That, that's the fact, and I will have a um, piece in the afternoon about this big American corporation that they need to comply because they have members in Europe. Yeah. So then it's, uh, it affects all their systems, actually. I have received an email even from Australia yeah. <laughs> so yeah. regarding GDPR and me as staying in communication, da, da, da. So these companies outside the European Union, they are looking at it very seriously if they want to continue to serve the customers, da, da, da. And don't forget the cases where European Commission uh, fined actually huge tech gi giant companies for enormous amount of money for not complying for some certain regulation. So. I think the signal was very, very strong. Make, 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 uh, make. Uh, trust me, it's not a joke. It's uh, true, absolutely. Okay, and 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 one 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 question uh, to you, Kay. Adil, uh, before we go to last round of of my last question, is. Uh, what, what I have heard about the United Kingdom and so that UK has such a long history in, in, in law and parliamentary stuff, etc. that there are laws from 13th centuries, 11th centuries that are still in, in, in place, etc. Now, how is it possible? Have you heard of any, any battles in the parliament, or etc., that some rule from 9th century doesn't comply with GDPR and, and it's still in much more power than... I know it's a, it, it's a crazy question, but, but, uh, but, uh, but every country has its own experiences. And this is exactly what we want to hear here. Uh, uh, how, how does that comply? Have you heard anything like that? Um. No, I haven't actually heard those uh, debates about whether it complies with some archaic laws or not. Uh, interestingly, uh, the Information Commissioner's Office is led by Liz Denham, and she came from Canada. She's originally, from, uh, she's originally Canadian, and she used to fulfill a similar role there. Um, and her, her attitude or, or her style seems to be more carrot than stick. So she seems to be more interested in actually changing people's behavior and the way they handle uh, data protection than actually penalties and the, the, the legal stick, uh, hitting them on the head with that. Um, but also in the parliament, the Digital um, Sports Culture Committee, I'm not quite sure the exact name, but they are quite switched on in terms of the data protection.
they have been leading um, the calls for uh, the Facebook executives to come and visit the parliament and also mm -hmm. uh, uh, give account of their side way before the uh, Cambridge Analytica um, issues came, came mm -hmm. to light. So in that sense, that, that there is some understanding and acknowledgement that this is important. I suspect in certain ways they also understand that this will unlock the digital economy in the UK, which is why it's important to get it right. Okay, good one. I, I, I like that touch. Now, the last question, I would like you to each express your, your, your vision on that and, and to close this panel, is uh, imagine there's a new country joining you. And imagine that you have to give some advice or warn about some bottlenecks or uh, just have some, some sort of a roadmap or simple advice. What would be that advice in, in terms of adapting GDPR in, from a fresh, blank page? So who, who, who would like to start? Latvia <laughs> Lat will start. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we host the conference. It's our responsibility. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, my attention to new European countries uh, if you take some data from citizens, take careful, not take to all package that uh, looks what you need for your business, uh, for public sector or for private sector, but um, not take all need or not, and after that you need to go inventorization and a and, and lot of jobs and a lot of experience for uh, mess. Okay, so, so these policies have to yeah. come first. This okay, good tip, first, yeah. good tip. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. India? Uh, well, maybe I'm optimistic about GDPR and uh, it makes me happy as I'm working in the field of human rights protection for a while, for a long while already. And uh, I would say that uh, a proper attention should be given to awareness raising and dealing with all the myths that GDPR is surrounded with, that uh, we won't be able to do businesses, uh, we won't be able to take photos, uh, uh, f parents won't be able to take photos at uh, children events and so on, and you just have to deal and make it clear that uh, GDPR is not about uh, not letting us do anything about data. Okay. Good one, thank you. Bernard? That's an interesting question because actually Mr. Kronbergs and uh, Moritz and me are dealing with such yeah, a yeah, task. Yeah. We, are, <laughs> we are bringing the torch of data protection to uh, a non-EU non country. And um, the content of this project is uh, revise your whole legal body, adapt it to, ad uh, 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 adapt it, uh, to the uh, to the common standards, uh, in this case to the standards of the, not only of the GDPR, but also of the um, Justice, Justice and Home Affairs uh, Directive, uh, which was also adopted in 2016, and is in, the, le the, the national, um, the national uh, legislators should have uh, adapted their national legislation until 6th of May. Uh, which never happened in no country, and um, try to establish a working uh, data protection authority, which is important, and the European Commission is always uh, interested in the process, process of accessing of new countries to the EU that they have working and um, uh, effective uh, data protection authorities and try to raise awareness for data protection in private companies but also in the general public. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Moritz? Well, being a German, telling other people what to do is always a difficult task. Um, maybe let me shift the focus maybe a little bit. Um, the European community is um, not only about markets, it's about common values. One main value is um, that we are all want to be democratic and pluralistic societies. And from the human rights perspective, um, um, 
taking care of data protection as one of the cornerstones of um, a pluralistic and democratic society. So try to find your way how you protect your citizens and your consumers um, regarding the processing of personal data. Um, and as we've seen between Sweden and Germany, we, have, we share common values, but we have different ways. And I think that's, um, that's maybe the key um, to implement rules like the GDPR. Okay, thank you. Margaret? Well, it's a very interesting question. I'm thinking about, first of all, we assume that we have some kind of knowledge about people already when we're talking about implementing GDPR. So I'm just put my thoughts to like India or countries where there are lots of say, unregistered people. They just exist. They don't exist in any registry. How would that work with protecting human rights and uh, well, the right to be, to be, and yeah. also to be forgotten. Uh, if you're already forgotten, you, because you don't exist, <laughs> that, that poses an interesting question. Anyway, I think we need to explain why, why, would like, why would we like to control, because it's about control in a way. In a light way, why, why it makes sense uh, that we are registered so we can achieve welfare or whatever that is. Um, that's a good thing. Uh, it can also be abused and we would like to uh, avoid uh, any kind of abuse like happening in countries where religious abuse or, or uh, racial use uh, or anything like that, the sens sensitive information that we actually create that trust that we obviously have in Sweden. We believe that government is good for us, <laughs> basically. Uh, we're having refugees that come to Sweden, and they don't see it the same way. Mm -hmm. So I think awareness and, and seeing the good in that, that we have a, a, a master data keeper of, of personal data which is minimized then, and it's for the purpose of health and its purpose of uh, I say financial support and, and the good, I say welfare of the society, and, and be able to express that, and uh, of course being able also to answer to those questions about what happened to the Jews in Germany, what happened to those people with uh, Islamic beliefs, or uh, well, any group that can be sort of singled out by that information that is there, that we protect that very, very carefully. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's those concerns that we need to address. And it will create more trust, actually. So, yeah, yeah. digital trust is, okay. is a key thing. Uh, and that actually it's, it's good for, for humanity in, in, the, in the big picture. Good one. Thank you. Thank you. Adil. Um, my first advice for a new country trying to come into the EU would be don't take GDPR as it is. Um, we've heard from earlier speakers that GDPR already has some challenges with the new technologies like blockchain. We know that there will be further challenges with artificial intelligence. So there are plenty of examples as to how to implement GDPR. Take the lead on the new items, take it forward. That would be my first advice. Secondly, I would advise them to take a more agile approach. GDPR has been going on for what, nearly two years. And we've seen the, the struggles of that Big Bang approach. Whereas if we've tackled it in pieces, we would have maybe made more progress. Uh, thirdly, be be better prepared than we have been across the board. Better support the organizations, as I said earlier on. I give them more practical examples. And lastly, embrace it and see it as a massive uh, opportunity. Okay, thank you. So, thank you. Let us uh, thank panelists and uh, bon appetit to you. And for the rest, uh, we are back here at 2 p.m. with a marketing session. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much.
Good one.